see. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you saw this, but about an hour ago, maybe an hour and a half ago, it didn't even make the news. I saw the vi live videos on Twitter. Uh, uh, two um, two Arabs, uh, Israeli Arabs, probably. It looks like they from a from a village within Israel. Um, you know, went into the the city of Hadera and started shooting people in the street. Now, they were not very good at what they did. They were not very effective. They didn't choose the right place, I guess, if they want to inflict mass casualties. And they only, they only, only in quotes, killed uh, two people and injured, it looks like four or six. It's hard to tell because the, the data was coming as it was happening. Um, and they were shot by, by the police. I don't know if you saw the video. I mean, I don't know if you saw the video. The video was brutal of the attack in Beersheva, um, a few days ago, where a guy basically came onto the street with this, he basically crashed his car into uh, another car. He, he, he ran over a bicyclist and crashed into another car, killed the bicyclist. But then um, he, he took out a knife, a big knife, like a butcher's knife, and he went around stabbing people. And you can see the video of him jumping on the back of a woman and stabbing her in the chest. I mean, and killing her. It's just horrific, the, the, the horror of it. Of, of, and, and you can see it happening. Imagine, I mean, try to put yourself in the shoes of this woman and what it must have felt like, you know. So um, in Beersheba, he killed four by stabbing them. In Beersheba, it was uh, civilians armed civilians, one was a bus driver, another civilian who, uh, the bus driver basically shot him, uh, challenged him, tried to get him to drop the knife, uh, didn't quite know he had already killed people, he just saw this maniac running around with a knife, and, uh, and I mean, just, just a, I don't know, something about killing somebody with a knife that is just horrific, and, you know, ultimately shot the 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 terrorist uh, as he lunged to him uh, to him with a knife so the with a sh with his uh, handgun and then a second c civilian shot him again to make sure he was dead um this one was also an israeli arab a bedouin from from a bedouin from the from the from the south who had actually sat in israeli jail because he of his membership in a in one of these islamist terrorist organizations i mean these are the kind of terrorist attacks that are partic particularly impossible to stop or very, very difficult to stop. Uh, these are just individuals deciding to go kill some people. In the case of the Beersheba one, it, it ends up that they arrested one of his brothers because one of his brothers at least knew about it happening. I could have warned the authorities, but didn't. Uh, but it's really hard. I don't know yet what's going on with the two guys who today shot and, and killed two people. Again, they, you know, they had semi-automatic weapons. They could have killed a lot more people, and they didn't. So in a sense, we're lucky, or we're lucky they're stupid, or we're lucky they're inefficient or ineffective uh, because they clearly wanted to kill more people but just didn't get to the right place. So, um, you know, just imagine living amongst people who at any moment will take out a knife and stab you or who would any more and you don't know right it's 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 not like they're all like that 99.9% .9 of them would or more 9.999% .9 of them wouldn't do it but you don't know who will the attack in Beersheba happened uh not far from not that far from where I was giving a talk the night before so not far from where we had been the night before. It was at a gas station. They just jumped on the people at the gas at the attendants and then some of the people gassing up their cars. And just imagine just standing, pumping your gas and somebody jumping on your back and stabbing you. Uh, truly horrific. And, and the real sad thing is that these are Israeli Arabs. These are Arabs that live within Israel. These are, these are, not, these are Arabs that have full rights as Israelis. They, they vote. Um, they have property rights. They have contract rights. They're, they they, they, they you know, I'm not saying there's no discrimination in Israel. I'm not saying some of the laws are not bad in Israel. Certainly some of them are. But overall, they have better lives in Israel than they do in any Arab country. They're freer in Israel than any Arab country. And, and yet, they have been radicalized primarily by Islamists, primarily by religion, 
to hate Israel and to be willing to commit suicide. Remember, these people are all committing suicide. They all know they're going to die. They all know they're not going to come back from these attacks. And yet they do them. And the, the power of religion, the power of, uh, uh, you know, not caring about your own life, dismissing your own life, willing to just give your own life away for what? Um, is, is, is truly powerful. And, and it's, you know, I think at the end it's a testament to the fact that Israel is so weak, that it won't stand up to them, that it won't, that it won't, destroy their leadership, that it, that, it, that it keeps treating Hamas and, and Hezbollah with kid gloves, and, and uh, uh, it, it is truly, it, it's truly horror that, uh, you know, they feel emboldened by Israel's weakness. They think they can win. The whole job of the Israeli military and the Israeli government from, from perspective of dealing with the Arabs is to make it unequivocal that no matter what they do, they will not win. That Israel will win, will defeat its enemy. That's the only way you can stop this kind of activity. It's like, as I said for years and years, nobody believed me, including people in the chat. Nobody believed me. I said, the way to stop terrorism in Europe is to defeat ISIS. If you defeat ISIS, if you crush ISIS, if you eliminate ISIS, terrorism in Europe will stop. And for the most part, it has. And the reason it has is people don't want to die for a dying cause. People don't want to die for a cause they know is lost. If you crush Iran, much of the Islamist agenda is gone. Much of the Islamist agenda is defeated thoroughly if you crush Iran. And in the case of Israel, if you crush Hamas, if you crush Hezbollah, if you tell the Palestinian Authority, they will never, ever, ever, ever win, no matter what they do. And you're willing to do anything to defend yourself then they will stop. But Israel won't do that, hasn't done that. The world won't let it to some extent, or the world, the world, you know, uh, penalizes Israel when it, it engages in any kind of actions to suggest that, and therefore, it just, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.